Hey, it's always a joy and a privilege for me to connect with you here on Upside Daily, whether you're on my Facebook page or whether you're listening to this podcast um, on your favorite podcast channel. Let me tell you, it's a joy and an honor to connect with you. In season one of this podcast, we tackled the topic of the power of identification with Christ. But this is the very first episode of season two where I'm going to tackle the topic, never run at a giant with your mouth shut. Now, in this episode, we're going to start off uh, with a story in 1 Samuel chapter 17. It's a story that I'm sure you, you know very well. David and Goliath, a young man with a little stone in his hand and a slingshot and a massive giant over three meters tall. He wears armor, all 57 kilograms of it. Uh, he has a, 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 you know, a, a massive shield and a, and a sword and a spear made of bronze. And, and he comes out and for 40 days, which is quite significant because 40 in scripture is always a time of testing. For 40 days, Goliath comes out onto the battlefield and defies the armies of Saul. He, he says, you know, if send me a man. If, if this man beats me and kills me, the Philistines will become your servants. But if I beat this man, you will become our servants and serve us. And so enter into the story. There's a little boy called David, a young man. The Bible says that the armies of Saul were filled with fear. They were totally frightened. You know, and as I read that, I wondered how many people face giants in in their lives today. You might be facing a giant. And what does that do to you? Does it fill your life with fear? Because enter into the story, here comes David. He's He's a shepherd. His, his, his three oldest brothers have gone off to the battlefield with Saul and his father sends him up and down between the battlefield and the sheep to take bread and cheese to his brothers. As he gets to the battlefield, the, the, the giant Goliath comes out and again defies the armies of Israel. The troops speak amongst each other and say, you know, have you ever seen anything like this? It's it's crazy. But the man who beats this giant, the king will offer him massive reward. David listens to all of this and he's frustrated. He comments and says, you know, this uncircumcised Philistine, how is it possible that he can taunt the armies of the living God? Not the armies of Saul, the armies of the living God. And David, he's, you know, he goes to his oldest brother and Eliab (laughs) loses his temper. He says, what are you doing here? You know, why aren't you minding your own business, tending the scrawny flock of sheep? And here we see David speaking to Saul and and Saul speaking to David. And and David ultimately comes out onto the battlefield and, and the Philistine speaks to him and David speaks to the Philistine. It's a crazy, crazy story. And, and this is where I want to head today. This is clearly about understanding the power we carry within our words. Never run at a giant with your mouth shut. And so for the next few episodes, I, I want to unpack something of this. And here's why this is important, because language and identity are intimately connected. It's easy to understand that identity, language, and culture are intimately connected and related to our lives. Language is the principal means by whereby we conduct our social lives. Language is the carrier that reflects our identity to others and delivers our culture. You see, culture is not inherited genetically. It is primarily transferred through language. What you speak matters. What you speak creates. You cannot run at a giant with your mouth shut. You see, here is the reality. I can say much about how you view your identity by listening to your language. Now, before we actually get to run at the giant with our mouths wide open, I believe, deeply believe that something else, something almost more important needs to be established in your own life. 
this year in January marked 30 years of full-time ministry for my life. You know, and I've seen many beautiful things over the last 30 years, but I've also seen some pretty challenging situations and unwise things that people have done. You know, I've seen people face many giants and fail dismally. And if I'm honest about this, most of the times that I saw that, that that could be relayed back to only one fundamental challenge that we as Christians, as sons of God, often find ourselves at the mercy of. And in accurate understanding of what our true identity in Christ really is. You see, the reality is that whatever the identity is that you see for your own life, that'll be the basis of the language that you speak. If, if you still see yourself broken in Adam, sinful, if Adam is still your reference, you will be speaking the language of Adam, the language of fear, of worry, without hope, always in lack. Whereas the language of the sons of God is one of inheritance and acceptance and abundance and faith and hope and love and innovation. You see, the language of heaven is not a language without challenge, but it is a language that in the midst of challenge can still find the reason to hope and the vocabulary to speak with faith. <laughs> you know, on Tuesday this week, um, school has just restarted in the UK and uh, we're in week two. And on Tuesday, we had one of those mornings in our household. Uh, Braden had hurt his leg at a rugby practice on Monday afternoon, and and so he needed to be dropped off at school. And the two little youngs, younger ones, were faffing about, and you know, we're, we're now just adjusting back to life on the school run and school clubs and teachers and parents' evenings, and 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 we had this crazy morning, and 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 eventually the kids are all in the car, and Sheree's rushing off with them. They're late, and five minutes later they knock on the door again, and and here they're standing. Joe had forgotten his hearing aids, and and it's another mad dash and a rush, and and they're off, and. And I come up the stairs and I sit down in front of my computer and I'm wondering to myself, what on earth does this have to do with the glory of God? You know, maybe you're wondering how on earth do you get your finances recovered after COVID? Or maybe you're still picking up the pieces of a broken relationship or a broken dream. Or maybe you've noticed a change in your health and you're just too frightened to have it checked out. Or your three-year-old has had another meltdown and you're just not sure how you're going to manage your way through this. Or, or you've been stuck in lockdown for a year now and you haven't seen anybody else and the loneliness is finally getting to you. Last Friday, Sheree and I went for our first COVID vaccine. And when we walked back into the house, Leighton, our nine-year-old, spontaneously burst into tears. And through the tears, he just said, I'm so glad that you guys are safe now and won't get really sick from COVID. And I'm standing there thinking as a father, has this child carried this fear around in his heart for an entire year? You see, the question stands. Do the words and the thoughts that I carry make a difference in all this? I ask you again, do the words and the thoughts that you carry make a difference in your life? More importantly, how does your understanding of the word, the glory and the presence of Christ, the Son of God, really deeply impact your identity? And how does that make a difference to your living? The answer to that is in every possible way. Let me tell you, this is not just a beautiful theological thought that I wanted to, you know, that I felt I wanted to impress you with. Because before we actually get to run at a giant with our mouths wide open, this needs to be established in our life. And I'm convinced that if we can get our hearts and our minds wrapped around the clear understanding of who we truly are in Christ, it would radically reshape how a lot of you are living. Does it change the madness in my house on a Tuesday when we're running late for school drop-off and all its implications? Does it really help my weak mom who is in hospital in South Africa? Does it, you know, does it help me? Does it make the frustration less that I can't be there to support and help her just to be with her? No, it doesn't really change any of that. And 
Truly, it won't for you either. But here's what it does change. It changes my capacity to think clearly, to respond with faith, not with fear, to allow his Holy Spirit to give direction and not to follow every whim or fallacy. It allows me to remain steadfast in my foundation in him. It allows me to live with clarity in the midst of storm. This is what it changes. And this is what your embrace and your understanding of your identity in the Son of God can do for your life today. And this is what this word and this podcast is all about. Tomorrow, we'll explore some more and it's going to get real. It's going to get real in a very deep and significant way. You have to connect again tomorrow to listen further. But for now, thank you for joining me on Upside Daily today, trusting that you will continue to be empowered to turn your world upside down. Tomorrow's episode, we'll be chatting about the brothers, the souls, and the Goliaths. Until then, live blessed. Mm -hmm.